This tutorial will show you how to use Google Forms version 2016. You go to New, and if in your initial menu you don't see Google Forms, go to More and find Google Forms. It will open up new form for you. If you are familiar and used old forms, one of the main differences is you now have one document for questions and responses. In the old version of forms, your questions that you create was one, would appear as one document and your responses would appear as another. And that was automatically created. To name your form, simply click on Untitled Form and type in what you want to call your form. Now everyone likes to make their forms pretty, and there are themes, as there used to be themes, but it's over here now in this thing called Color Palette. You can click on the Color Palette and click on the various colors to simply change the background color of your form. If you want to get fancy, you can go down here to this image icon, and there's different themes. So you've got different categories of themes. So you could click on birthday theme, food and dining, party, whatever you want. So I could go to just kids and maybe I like this train theme. Also, if there's a scroll bar here, you can scroll down and look at all the different themes. And then there's other, which have basically kind of patterny sort of themes that don't all necessarily go with something specific. So I'm just going to pick a pattern theme and I'm going to say select. Next of course is questions. So here is form description. You can type something in form description if you want. You don't have to. It could be more specific directions for people how to use the form or what information you want. Anything can go in here but nothing ha doesn't have to. By default it will give you an untitled question that is a multiple choice question. So you simply highlight and delete and type in your question where it says question. Once you have the question typed in, you can click on the options to put your answer. So you can say whatever you want. Add another option, simply click on add another option. You can say 10 to 20, Add another option and it lets you add as many options as you want and if you want or add other you simply click other and what it will do is it allows the person to choose other and type in what they want if you made an error and you didn't want one of these options like just say I don't want the other option the X right here simply click on it and it removes that option this will not appear in your question if the question is required, which means people must answer the question to be able to submit the form, simply slide the required button over and it is now a required question. If you wanted to delete this whole question, the garbage can is delete. I'm not going to delete my question. But if you wanted to duplicate this question, like just say you had a very similar question and maybe only a couple of answers were different, you could simply click on duplicate and it duplicates the question. Now since I don't want two of the same question, I can now hit delete. To add another question, you simply click on the plus sign and it'll add a question right below. And you have other question options besides multiple choice. And let's look at the choice. You have short answer, paragraph if you need them to write a longer answer, there's check boxes, a drop down menu, a linear scale, scale, a multiple choice grid, and a date. We will go through all these question types. Short answer is just simple short answer. You know, what is your favorite food? Question, it even spell checks. Says short answer text. You want to make it required? You can. And then let's add another question. And notice they're adding the questions below. So next question, 
paragraph, it's going to be the same kind of thing as the short answer. You type in your question, but it leaves more room for the students or whoever is answering the survey to fill in their answer. Let's take a look at checkboxes. So checkboxes allow people to pick more than one answer. So for example, if you wanted to say, have a, a response, they're allowed to pick more than one answer, you could use checkboxes. So for example, if you want to ask what activities does someone enjoy, and they're allowed to check more than one answer off, you could do that this way. And I'll show you in preview, if you want to see your survey as you go, here's the preview button up here, you can see what your survey is going to look like. How old are you? What's your favorite food? And see, notice this one, I can check off more than one answer, whereas with multiple choice, it only allows you to check one answer. So if I, that's preview mode, so you can see as you're working what your form is going to look like. And if you want to get back to editing, here's the pencil tool. Click on edit and takes you back to your form. Let's add another question. <clears throat> Now notice, put the question up top here, I'm not sure why, but if I wanted to move this down, you can rearrange your question. See these little dots here? I can click and I can move that question down to the bottom. So let's look at the next question type, drop down menu. It gives you choices that people could choose from a drop down menu. What? So if you want choices from the drop down menu, it's the same thing, I typed in the question, I typed in my answers. If you want it to be required, you can just click required and let's see what it looks like in preview. What is your favorite place to vacation? Choose. There's your drop down menu. Let's add another question. Next question you can have is a linear scale. So you can ask a question and ask them scale of one to five, or you could adjust your scale and it could be one to whatever all the way up to ten. Right here the labels are what is going to be on one end of the scale at the one and the other end of the scale at a ten. So for example you could ask the entertainment for the event was and one would be strongly disagree through ten strongly agree. Let's take a look at it in preview. and we go down to the bottom and this is what it looks like. Also, if you marked a question as that the participants must respond, there will be an asterisk by the question <clears throat> in your preview and when you share the form. Remember to go back to editing, it's the pencil in the upper right corner. The next question to add, <clears throat> type of question, multiple choice grid. So this is the one where sometimes it can be a little tricky. You're going to have rows and columns so they can actually answer about a bunch of different things. So you might want to think about something that you want to know their opinion on. And I'll give you an example. The last two types of questions are date and time. Date is simply, you could ask a question, you want a specific date, and people put in the month, day, year. So, when were you born, for example. Let's look at it in preview. And the person can put in month, day, year. They can pick from a calendar, or they can type it in themselves. Either one. Either way works. The next, the final question type of question is a time question, if it'll let me go down there. Time. And it's the same thing if you needed to put a time in, like if you were asking about when you wanted to come volunteer. Time, and let's look at it in preview. It allows them to put time and AM or PM. And those are the basic questions. Another feature in new forms is you could add a section. They used to have page break, now they have section, it's right here. When you click on it, 
it basically adds another section. So you could divide up your information into sections. Do you have to do that? No. But it depends on what you're doing. It may be a form that is many, many questions and you want to divide them up into topics. It could be a test that has many, many sections and you want to divide them into topics. And all you have to do is name the type of the section. Your first section will default to the name that you put on your form. So I could just call this section two. If you decide you don't want the section anymore, these little dots, menu choices here, allow you to merge with the section above. You could delete the whole section or you could duplicate the section. So if I want to go back, I can merge with above and now it looks the same. Couple reminders. Remember, if you want to move questions around, it's the dots at the top, and you can simply click and move them around. Color palette and themes are right underneath here. One thing that is different under the settings are some things you're going to want to look at. When you go settings, <clears throat> you can decide. If you only want people to submit one response, that means they would have to log in. So you would be using that if your school is a Google Apps for Education school and you have the options of them actually logging in. <clears throat> you can get type in a message. Once someone hits submit, this is the generic message. Your response has been recorded. You can put whatever you want. If there's something else you want people to do or know once they get confirmation they submitted in, like maybe you want to say thank you for participating. You want to give some kind of directions, you can. If you want them to be allowed to submit another response, you can check this off or uncheck it. If you want to allow the user to edit their responses, you can check this off. If you want a user to see the summary of the responses, you can check this off. And if you want to show them how far they are along in the survey, you can do show progress bar. And if you want to shuffle the question order, like for example, you're using this for a quiz and you don't want kids next to each other having the same order of questions, you can do that. If you make any changes to the settings, make sure you click save. One very important thing about forms. When you're ready to send out your form, there's two ways to send it out. First, you have the button here that says send. And when you click on send, it gives you different ways. Send via email, send via a link, embedded in HTML, and if you don't know what this is, don't worry about it. You also can share from Google+, Facebook, and Twitter now. A lot of people do send via email if you know who you want to email them out. And all you have to do is type in the email address, who you want to email it to. You can put in a subject. You can type a message giving some directions. And if you want the form to be in the body of the email, you can check this box right off here. Now, if there's people you want to collaborate on the form, which means you want them to be able to edit it, you can click on Add Collaborators here. And that allows people to work on the form in the edited version. And you simply click Send. Now, what if you have a whole bunch of people or you want to give this to students and you don't want to send it via email? You simply click here, the link icon, and this is the link that you can share with people, that you can email people. So you can simply copy the link and then put this link wherever you want for people to access the form. But you have to use this link. If you want it to be a shortened URL, short because this is so long, you can click off shortened URL and this is the link as well. And you can just copy it and paste this link wherever you want to. Now remember, a lot of people might think, okay, well, I'm just going to send this link to someone and they will get the form. Well, no, no, no. This is edit. They will not have access. This is the editable version of the form. You can go to preview and take this link as well, which was the long link you got when you clicked on the link thing, but it's a lot easier now. You can go to send, pick link, here's the long link, pick a shortened one, and this is the link you send to people. And that's form basics.